Uh, so I thank you for coming. I'm Dania Pilmalov, and I come from the um, European Topic Center of the University of Malaga. So um, uh, thank you for joining this first webinar of the uh, Internet Med Protection Biodiversity Protection um, Project. Uh, that's a working webinar. So in that sense, it's um, it's a preparation for a longer term collaboration between several um, initiatives happening in the Mediterranean and focusing on marine litter. Uh, we will have five presentations of uh, projects. They are all belonging to the Interact Met uh, community. Uh, but as we saw that there has been some demand, so uh, we have participants in, um, in this webinar. Uh, some of you might not know um, enough the community, so you are welcome to, to hear a bit more about, um, about these projects. And uh, we welcome you also to participate in upcoming events that we will uh, uh, share with you. I mean, uh, the, the, leave the date of our upcoming events and upcoming activities in case you are interested. So uh, we are quite tight in time. We uh, we would like to finalize. Uh, at uh, quarter past four this afternoon, so we have ten minutes now. Um, in case you have questions, you will have the possibility to, to write us, uh, and we will be uh, we will be answering you. Um, from my side, uh, I will just uh, let you know that um, for the speakers, you need to go to your um, green button, uh, the speaker button, and to unmute it to be able to, uh, uh, so we can hear you. Uh, and I request the other speakers to please mute uh, their microphones so there is no background noise. From my side, I want to start by presenting um, Mr. Francois Gargani from representing the Amari project and coming from the French Research Institute for the exploration of. Uh, he will be presenting uh, MPAs and marine litter dynamics, addressing marine litter in Mediterranean areas, focusing on the model of marine litter dynamics. Uh, yeah, thank you. I hope you are able to. Uh, yeah, I'm just opening your presentation, and I hope we are able to hear you. I will mute my microphone and uh, will let you know if we can hear you. Mr. Gargani, to you. Uh, uh, so AMA is mainly involving uh, uh, MPA when um, uh, our partnership is more focusing on marine litter. So uh, what has been considered within this project, uh, next, next slide is there, is uh, within AMA, I mean, the, the general pro uh, project will develop uh, methodology and uh, mainly geospatial tools. Maybe some of us are aware of. And the aim is to assess uh, monitor multiple uh, uh, constraints for the marine environment and MPAs. And the second point would be mainly to translate guidelines into coordinated actions for, I mean, the um, uh, partner MPAs. And this will be done to avoid the uh, uh, cumulative impact and to solve hot spots of conflicts. And it means helping to manage the different uh, uh, conflicts uh, that may arise in different MPAs. And also to promote transnational cooperation regulations and so on, data access and breaks practices, and finally share information. So um, for marine litter, uh, uh, in, in the plan, we do have different points that uh, are probably important, not only for AMA, but also for all participants. Uh, the first one is to have guidelines for standard management and uh, common approach and strategy, uh, including marine litter. So uh, it means that we will give something like a, a drivers and constraint to manage the marine litter the same way in the different uh, partners and PAs. And then we will have a special analysis of human use. It means that we will provide layers for uh, marine litter and so on. Then we will have a specific task on modeling, mainly to understand connectivity uh, between different MPAs, but also understanding how I mean, the litter may strand and affect the different MPA. And then we have some uh, 
uh, evaluation of processes, uh, methods, models, tools, and so on, in order to provide some support for management and monitoring. And then finally, when we have this uh, uh, completed, we will uh, transfer all these best practices across MPAs. Um, first, I mean, um, uh, MPAs involved in AMA, and then transferring to other territories. So that will be one of the main points to be considered within Panacea and the links with Acts for Litter that we already uh, decided. Uh, well, <clears throat> about marine litter, what is important that, I mean, the Commission decision was revisited last year. And uh, actually, we do have four indicators. I mean, stranded seafloor and surface litter, it's uh, D10C1. We have also concern with microplastics ingested litter, entanglement injury. And in fact, uh, when you consider MPA, it's quite complicated to monitor ingested or entanglement, or locally, if you are using AROVs, for instance, for entangled organism, benthic organism on the sea floor, it could be working well. Uh, but more or less, it must be focusing on beach, sea floor, surface, or microplastics. So what has been plain in AMAR is uh, to select the most suitable approaches for MPA. So it is important to understand that we have already some guidance, guidelines for monitoring more litter within, uh, I mean, European coastlines. Uh, it's, it's the uh, framework of a marine strategy framework directive, MSFD. And then we have to look about specific points that are dedicated, that must be dedicated to MPA. And this one is, will be uh, the main uh, work for this year will be to, to have something like a report I mean, setting priorities, defining all the constraints for MPAs and the best strategy and so on, and including some, uh, including some uh, new approach that may support, I mean, monitoring and management, and then uh, try to implement that within AMR before we go to uh, promotion and informing other MPA. Uh, so, I give you some examples of, of what has been done. We could, I mean, start already with monitoring, applying just the guidance and guidelines that were provided by the MSFD. But we think that uh, it's better to define a better strategy to focus on specific points where uh, litter is accumulating. So what we call hotspots. So for striding, for instance, we start on uh, we start to map all the accumulation areas on the on the coastline. So this is these are examples of. Uh, uh, hotspots along Corsican M uh, coast from the MPA, so Bonifacio Strait and Cape Corsica, the new park that is just starting now. And we'll have the same kind of experiment with some other AMAR uh, partners, such as uh, uh, Malta, for instance, that will be next fall, uh, maybe next year for, I mean, the other uh, AMAR partner. And then from this, we will have some uh, regular monitoring on specific points where there is a lot of. You can see, for instance, in the uh, um, left part of the uh, the picture that is on the right, you have a lot of uh, red points, meaning a lot of accumulation areas. So this could be a place to monitor in priority. So the first step before applying MSFD guidelines is to locate areas where to monitor. So this is one that would be one of the main points of uh, the project. Then uh, once we will have completed the uh, uh, location of hotspots, then we'll have some, uh, I mean, uh, I would say, uh, science work, um, modeling and so on, to predict stranding and to see whether what we, that what we detected and measured was exa is exactly the same that what we predict. And so we will work also on the different scale. I mean, mainly at first on large scale, high, uh, low resolution. When we come then on specific points with higher resolution, uh, then we will have uh, something like. Uh, um, a good tool to predict where the litter may accumulate, validated, and also some uh, field uh, measurements just to confirm first before we go on regular monitoring. Then we'll have some higher resolution modeling just to uh, check for some local effects on swaths and so on. And then we extend to all our MPAs uh, that will be next year before, before we go on connectivity and we will have one experiment to see whether marine litter may transport different species and so on between two MPAs. Finally, uh, we will have something like uh, providing data for the um, uh, mapping tool from AMAR. That's one point. And then uh, we will try to start this year and discuss at the next MedPan meeting next uh, November uh, something like uh, reports 
making some recommendation on monitoring and defining the best strategy adapted for uh, to uh, to monitor MPAs. That will be mainly uh, focusing on uh, stranding litter, but it's, it will also have some consideration about seafloor litter and microplastics. But in that case, I mean, it's quite complicated to locate accumulation area because, I mean, the scale, I mean, the, 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 the uh, amount of work needed is far more important. And also for floating litter, they may, they may I mean, uh, circulate, be transported and so on. And it's more the connectivity that is important for floating litter than really hotspots uh, of accumulation. And then we will recommend, I mean, for the partner of the project, all these uh, documents with some, I mean, uh, uh, results inside, based, I mean, science, uh, scientific background. And then we will disseminate to other uh, um, MPS that are not AMR, and that will be, I mean, the, uh, after we have completed all this work, it will just be dissemination, including some discussion and changes, maybe improving the document down. Yes, it was very clear uh, for me. I hope for the rest as well. Um, thank you for the presentation. It's really impressive to see how um, marine litter could be monitored uh, in such a detailed scale, and especially that you're using um, like some high resolution, uh, as I understood, uh, tools to, to detect, detect that. I hope we can elaborate yes. um, in the future with you. Uh, due to time uh, restrictions, we need to start with the okay. next presentation, and we will keep at the end uh, a little bit of time for questions. So thank you so much, uh, Mr. Galgani. And now I would like to present Mr. Thomas Lacociani. I hope I, uh, I spelled the name correctly, from Act for Litter Project. And he comes from the Mediterranean uh, Information Office for Environment, Culture, and Sustainable Development. Um, so uh, the presentation will be on joint measures to pre preserve natural ecosystems from marine litter in Mediterranean MPA. So good afternoon, everybody. I hope everybody can hear me well. <laughs> in fact, I am not a mister. <laughs> I am a miss. So welcome to this webinar. Indeed, my presentation is going to focus on the Act for Litter project. And um, let me just check. How? Ah, okay. So the marine litter, of course, has been acknowledged as a major threat in the Mediterranean MPAs. And also it's very clear that MPA managers lack the tools and knowledge to effectively address the issue at their level and prevent the problem from getting worse. So this was, in fact, the challenge that the Act for Litter um, tried to address. And uh, in that sense, we managed to get um, on board an interreg -Med project, which is co-financed by the European Regional Development Fund. And it's an 18-month project. You can see some key facts and figures on the slide. Uh, with the overall aim to facilitate the efforts of the MPA managers to develop effective and targeted measures towards reaching their conservation goals. And um, in order to do that, we have put together a, a team, the Act for Leader team. So the implementing partners are the Catalan Waste Agency and the Regional Activity Center for Sustainable Consumption Production, which is the lead partner, Santana School of Advanced Studies, MedPan, and MIO. And as you can see, we have a large group of associate partners among which most of them are uh, Mediterranean MPAs. So the main lines of action include, first of all, the identification of potential measures to address marine litter in Mediterranean MPAs. Then the next step will be to carry out a feasibility assessment of the measures, taking into consideration socioeconomic and environmental aspects, and trying to integrate to the extent possible uh, the ecosystem services uh, aspect. And by doing so, we will try to develop a decision-making model based on an algorithm that will allow for a short listing of uh, targeted measures to be of value for specific MPA context. And uh, subsequently, based on the output of the model and also taking into consideration the feedback from stakeholder groups, we are going to pilot the, the model in 10 select, at least in 10 selected MPAs uh, and support these MPAs towards developing 
uh, marine litter action plans. Of course, by doing so, we will be able to identify, the, let's say, the common actions that could be implemented by other Mediterranean MPAs. And in that sense, we plan to elaborate a joint governance scheme for improving marine litter management in Mediterranean MPAs. Not necessarily all MPAs will have to draw action plans, but they can uh, introduce marine litter considerations, for example, in waste management plans or any other management plans they have in place. And last but not least, we are currently uh, exploring the possibility of having a new activity on board. Um, it has been, we have been given the green light, but still there are some administrative aspects that need to be taken care of, which is about assessing marine litter on beaches uh, in Mediterranean MPAs, given the fact that there is not enough information available. And um, of course, we will do so by applying the guidelines that Francois Galgani mentioned about, which have been developed by the technical group at a European level, taking also into consideration the Barcelona Convention uh, requirements for that. And uh, the overall idea is to build the capacities of MPA managers on how to monitor marine litter and subsequently in the future to monitor the success of the um, action plans for marine litter. Uh, so the overall expected results of the project is strengthened networking of Mediterranean MPAs in defining a common approach for addressing marine litter, improved management of the MPAs with regard to the marine litter issue, and enhanced implementation of the, the relevant policy framework, such as the Marine Strategy Framework Directive, the Barcelona Convention Regional Plan for Marine Litter Management, and other related legislative frameworks. And where we are so far, so far we have managed to draft an initial list of measures and uh, the methodological approach for developing the decision-making tool. Uh, we have made uh, preparations for the first meeting of the Associated Partners, which is going to be held in Barcelona this October. And as already mentioned by Francois, uh, we have already um, scheduled our first marine litter conference, which is going to take place back to back with the MedFund workshop. And it will be uh, in the, on the 28th of November, where uh, the idea is to present the progress achieved and also explore synergies with other projects. And last but not least, in the next days or so, we will uh, carry out a call of interest for the MPA pilot actions. So this was it from my side. I hope I managed to uh, briefly present what we are planning to do, and I would be happy to answer any of your questions. Thank you. Uh, I see some uh, some very interesting connections already between uh, Amari and Act for Litter happening based what I uh, understand from you, which is uh, very interesting, uh, especially looking from the management and, and policy targets. So there there are some very clear indications uh, to support uh, the uh, Marine Strategy Framework Directive, the Barcelona Convention. Uh, and to include some uh, recommendations uh, into management plans uh, in MPAs, which are quite of the interest uh, from the Panacea side to identify these synergies. Um, we will keep uh, some, uh, some questions until the end. Meanwhile, I would like to, uh, to welcome uh, Antonella Arcangeli from the Met Sea Litter Project, uh, coming from the Italian, the Italian Institute for for the environmental protection and research. So I will so, mute again my microphone. Uh, Antonella, you need to unmute your microphone. I see that you did it. So welcome on board. OK, thank you. Thank you all. This is Antonella speaking from ISPRA. And uh, I will present on behalf of the partnership of the Medsi Little Project something uh, about the project. So the Medsi Little uh, aim to develop uh, some protocols specific for the Mediterranean area to protect biodiversity from little impact, both at basin and local MPA scale. So the problem behind the project is well known. Marine litter is a global threat for living marine organisms, but it is particularly a problem for the Mediterranean Sea. 
which is uh, one of the world's biodiversity hotspots, but is also one of the most polluted at sea worldwide. So Medzilitar aims to network within the Mediterranean Basin representative MPAs and scientific organizations for develop, test, and deliver some protocols which could be easy to apply but uh, also cost-effective to monitor and manage the litter impact at uh, basin scale. So in four countries are involved in the project, which are Spain, France, Italy, and Greece. So we are looking at protocols specifically for two special scales. So some mm, monitoring protocols uh, good for monitor the little impact in a local within MPA scale and protocols that could help us on having data on marine litter at large in basin wide scale. And we will look at both micro and macro litter. So basically um, we have two working group groups working within the project. One working group is working specifically on floating macro litter, so specifically on protocols to monitor floating macro litter and the impact on, uh, on biota. And another working group is working on ingestion. And uh, these are mainly the partners working for uh, the protocols for uh, monitoring floating macro litter. And, uh, at date, we are uh, sort of listing all the covariates, uh, so the observation parameters that can influence the sighting probability. And so we are setting a series of experiments to define the appropriate combination of conditions for monitoring uh, litter from each platform type. So for example, uh, we are setting a series of experiments to synoptically collect data from different platforms, so from bot, for example, drone, or a, a, by a net collecting uh, at the surface all their items, and in order to compare results from different platforms. And uh, we, the University of Barcelona, for example, is setting experiments to select the more appropriate type of the drones or cameras to be used for the monitoring. And uh, also, uh, we are setting experiments to set the, the influence of the observers, the experience of the observers in the monitoring, or uh, the meteor conditions, or uh, to set the correct strip width and the size of objects that can be seen from different platform types. So basically, we are looking, at, uh, we are using mostly for the large scale ferries as platform of observation, and uh, we are using different platform for the local scale. So we are looking at um, using uh, sailing boats, inflatable drone, or uh, aircraft to collect data on a more local scale, and we are trying to compare and uh, intercalibrate. Uh, the data collection in order to have comparable data. So this is mainly basically the work we are done now at this stage for the studying um, part for the floating macro litter. And uh, the, the second working group is still uh, is working on ingestion. And so um, we are testing the main use methods for um, micro and macro plastic detection in uh, fish and sea turtle and um, polychaetes. So we will use mainly sea turtle for monitoring litter ingestion at basin wide scale. And instead, we will use mainly fish and polychaetes for the local scale. And uh, at data, for example, uh, four different methodologies has been tested on how to reduce contamination uh, um, during the analysis. So we held uh, um, four meetings a date, and uh, we will test all the experiments that we are setting now during the next phase that will be from uh, October next. So this is uh, very briefly 
and uh, what we have done and uh, what we will do. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Antonella, for this very interesting presentation. Um, I personally did not know that you were using uh, different scales for the work, but I think uh, it's even uh, more details in terms of outcome at, at the level of which uh, some protocols might be more useful than others, uh, I, can, I can see. But maybe that could be a question for you afterwards. Uh, thank you so much. We move now to uh, the Blue Island project. So we have Patricia Deveri from ICREA Research Institute and uh, Mikhail Grelaud, I hope I pronounce correctly, from the uh, Autonomic University of Barcelona, who will be presenting um, the seasonal variation of waste uh, due to tourism in their Blue Island uh, project. So welcome on board and please unmute your microphones. Good afternoon, everybody. Can you hear me? I guess so. Yes. So, uh, well, I'm alone. I'm Mikhail Groro from uh, the Institute of Environmental Science and Technology from the Autonomous University of Barcelona. And uh, I will start by introducing very briefly the, the Blue Island project, which uh, focuses on the seasonal variation of waste and uh, as an effect of tourism. And then I will show some uh, preliminary results that uh, we obtained uh, from a uh, different survey that we conducted uh, until now. So the aim of the Blue Island project is to assess and mitigate the seasonal variation of waste as an effect of tourism on the Mediterranean island. This modular project is part of the Interreg made a sustainable tourism thematic. And as you probably know, the project under uh, this thematic shall ensure that the impact of touristic activities on natural and cultural heritage are taken into account when the development of such activities is considered to take place in coastal and marine areas. Okay, so the project is coordinated by the Ministry of Agriculture and Environment of the Republic of Cyprus, and 14 partners uh, from eight countries are involved. Among these 14 partners, 11 are from islands, and nine islands were selected for the monitoring of the marine litter, among other uh, activities. The partners are from public administration or scientific institute, as this is the case for us, the ICTA UAB, or the, the CONISMA uh, in Sicily. So, a little bit of background. Due to the massive development of tourism over the last few decades, the islands in general and the Mediterranean, Mediterranean islands in particular have to face a seasonal huge increase in the generation of waste. The main problem is that that Islands are sea-locked territories. In other words, they can't expand the surface at all. And they have to deal with this seasonal increase of waste, sometimes with structure adapted for the local population or even outdated uh, structures. So you can imagine the local municipalities uh, when they, in some places the, pos the population is multiplied by two, five, or even 10, for example, in Mykonos, during the summer months. It is then vital for these islands to guarantee good waste management. Another problem is that we have a fragmentary knowledge, I said Francois earlier, on this seasonal variation of waste generation. It is easy to understand that during high touristic season, the population increases, and so does the waste generated. But some questions need to be answered as well, such as what type of waste is generated and where is it generated? And once these questions are answered, it will help to address the last challenge, which is the lack of strategic plans for most of the Mediterranean islands. Uh, then the main objectives of the Blue Islands project are to establish a model for effectively addressing the seasonal variation of waste generation, to increase the sustainability of tourism in coastal areas, and to enhance uh, planning cooperation and synergy among Mediterranean islands. 
So I will only, in this presentation, I will only detail one of the tasks that has been done, uh, what have to be done uh, for this year, indeed to, to address and mitigate the effects of the seasonal variation of West generation. It has been decided to monitor the marine litter generated on selected beaches of nine Mediterranean islands during the low and high touristic season. So the ETA here at Barcelona is in charge of this task. Uh, at the same time, CONISMA, so from Sicily, will conduct a survey on the composition of the wastewater released into the sea in three islands, uh, while Cyprus will monitor the amount of waste, uh, of municipal solid waste generated by the population, the restaurants, the hotels, etc., uh, along the beaches uh, that were selected for the marine litter survey. So the results of this study will be used to promote sustainable tourism model through policy making tools. And these models will be inter-examined for their uh, financial uh, sustainability. So as I said, uh, nine islands are involved in this project. And for each island, uh, three beaches three beaches uh, were selected in order to what happened? Okay, so three beaches were selected in in order to encompass a wide range of, uh, let's say, beach user frequentation. So for each island, uh, we chose a high touristic beach, a beach mainly used by locals, and a remote beach uh, to be monitored. So the remote beach, if possible, could be uh, in uh, marine protected areas. The survey consists in the quantification and the characterization of the marine litter present on a fixed 100 meter portion uh, of the selected beach. The protocol that we use was adapted from the OSPAR guideline for monitoring marine litter on beaches, and it has been slightly changed to fit uh, the Blue Island's purpose. For example, by taking into account the microplastics or to add a class for the particles below 5 millimeters. And uh, in total, uh, 27 beaches were, are, and will be periodically monitored uh, this year. And uh, I will now, we, we start to have the results from all the islands, but uh, since we have so much, uh, so few time, I will briefly present you the premin, preliminary results that were obtained in Mallorca, so in the western basin of the Mediterranean Sea. And uh, so on the map, you can see uh, the island of Mallorca and the three sites that we selected. So in red, the touristic beach, in yellow, the beach used by uh, the locals, and in green, uh, the remote beach. So here are the very first results that we will get from Mallorca. So the monitoring started in February, and uh, on this graph, so on the left, you can see the number of items collected during the, the four first surveys, so in February, May, June, and July, and for the three, uh, three types of beach. So in orange, the touristic one, in uh, black, the, the beach used by locals, and in gray, the, the remote beach. So the first thing that we can see is that uh, there is a seasonal variation of waste. In total, we go from a bit more than 2,000 items per 100 meter of beach in February to more than 17,000 items in July. So far, the total amount uh, of items found is multiplied by almost nine from the low to the high touristic season. And it is clear that the touristic beach generates more marine litter than the beach used by locals and the remote beach. In the, so on the next graph, in the OSPA guideline, the marine litter is divided into 13 main categories. And uh, what we can see is that uh, the, the plastic items and the paper items dominate the marine litter, at least for these three beaches. Uh, as taken together, they represent more than 90% of the marine litter uh, present on the beach uh, in Mallorca. So here uh, it's uh, so still the same study, but more in detail. So for the four months uh, of the of the monitoring and for each type uh, of beach, 
uh, in the touristic and the remote beaches, the Marine Lito is largely dominated by the plastic debris, so represented in blue in the graph, while in the beach uses, uh, used mainly by the, the locals, we observe a higher proportion of paper heat ends uh, that sometimes even exceed the amount of uh, plastic uh, debris, such as in uh, June and uh, July. So again, the same graph as uh, earlier. So this is the general distribution of the main waste categories for the four first monitoring. And uh, here the data uh, for the three types of beaches are put together. Uh, we can see a slight decrease in the proportion of plastic items and a slight increase of the piper uh, items from February to the July. And we have seen that these changes is uh, in proportion are driven by the increase of piper uh, items on the beaches mainly used uh, by locals. So now if we look very carefully, uh, sorry for the graph, which are a bit uh, messy, but uh, so on the uh, on these two graphs, uh, I plotted all the different items that we found in the plastic category and the on the left and the paper uh, category on the right. So these categories are from the OSPAR guidelines. And what we can see is that the amount of plastic is uh, item is dominated by the broken pieces of plastic, as they represent between 65 and 80 percent of all the plastic items. While the paper category is largely dominated by the cigarette butts in yellow on the on the second graph, so the cigarette butts represent between 33 and more than 90 percent of the paper paper items found on the beach. So this preliminary result show a clear increase of the marine litter uh, over time, that the marine litter is dominated by the plastic items uh, on the touristic and the river beach, while uh, on the beach mainly used by locals, uh, the, the marine litter is dominated by the plastic and the paper uh, items. The plastic items dominated, are dominated by the broken pieces and uh, a huge part of microplastics. Uh, while the paper items are dominated by the cigarette butts. And that's all for me. Thank you. So, thank you so much, Mikhail. Uh, very interesting presentation indeed. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm a bit, uh, I mean, after seeing your, your graphs, I'm a bit shocked to see that um, the remote uh, areas are the one uh, having the consequences of, uh, I mean, they have quite uh, quite similar statistics in terms of the percentage of plastics than the touristic beaches, which could be a bit of a direct relation, I think, with uh, with an indirect effect of, um, of tourism. Um, that's, I think, yeah, very important um, to, to, to mention. Um, yeah, we look forward to know more from your project, but uh, thank you so much. Indeed, it's really interesting results that you're getting. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I'm happy to know that we're going uh, fine with time. And now we have post BMET project that will be presented by Simeone Simone from the Institute of Marine and Coastal Environment. Um, we wanted to, um, to have uh, this project on board due to what we understood during uh, earlier, during the kickoff meeting of Panacea, on this um, ambigu ambiguity uh, from the um, from um, from the outside, uh, to know that um, the Posidonia is in many cases uh, considered as a litter, and in many management activities, it's just taken out as, as if it were. So I think um, we would like to hear from you this change in perspective that you're trying to identify in your project. If you could elaborate on this point, so we look uh, forward to, to hear you. Thank you. Uh, so, I am uh, Simone Simeone. I come from uh, National Council of Research and Fondazione IMC. I am here to present our first results and the um, framework of uh, the post med project. Uh, so, uh, is uh, on focuses on the sustainable management of the 
system Posidonia beaches in uh, Mediterranean uh, region. As, uh, uh, as you know, uh, the Posidonia Oceanica lose leaves and rhizome source or sometimes the leaves are uprooted by storms and uh, often uh, is deposited uh, along the shores. Uh, when uh, when the, the, the leaf or the other part of Posidonia is deposited on a sandy shore, it is um, uh, common uh, found some uh, very wedge deposits that include uh, uh, leaf, rhizomes, uh, uh, fibers of Posidonia and of course the sand that compose the beach. So these structures is common nose are uh, banquet, banquet of uh, Posidonia Oceanica. Um, the, 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 the banquet uh, could happen, could occur in uh, some part in uh, uh, in a um, wide part of Mediterranean Sea, but the interest the, the, of managers on banquet is mainly uh, due because they, depo they, they are deposited on, uh, sandy, on sandy shores. So for this, we, we develop uh, uh, with, uh, with the, our uh, other partners this uh, kind of project, the POSBIMED project that uh, aims to enhance the awareness of the benefits of this natural capital, capital and address uh, common and sustainable uh, tools to enhance the management capital, uh, capacity. So, uh, just to have uh, a, to, to share a management strategy uh, for uh, Posidonia Meadows and of course for banquet management and of course for beach and dune maintenance, uh, along the Mediterranean coast. Here you can see, uh, just in summary, the, um, the budget of the project and the duration of the project. So it is not a wide project. We, have, uh, we are, we are um, only five uh, partners, but we think that we can represent the, Mediter the whole Mediterranean uh, Sea. So why we, we focus on Banquet? Because the Banquet of Posidonia Oceanica in tourist uh, zone represent uh, uh, a big problem sometimes uh, for uh, the um, uh, touristic exploitation of, uh, of the beaches. And often these materials are uh, removed and disposed by the administration and by the local managers as waste. So it is considered a uh, waste. But uh, as uh, we know, we researchers know, we scientific community know, this material can be important because uh, provide some uh, ecosystem services to the to the coastal ecosystem. So, uh, so can reduce the swell uh, energy when the wave approach the coasts, or can enhance the dune formation, increasing the resilience of the coast and the resilience to the cost of the climate change effects. Uh, the question that uh, that uh, we put on uh, this project is uh, can the beach cast litter of Posidonia Oceanica be managed as uh, waste? So it is correct this kind of uh, management. Uh, it is uh, a good uh, practice. Uh, the, the partner, the partner of the project, uh, as you can see, is a representative of the whole Mediterranean uh, northern uh, Eastern and Western uh, region. So we have France partner, Aide Mediterranean. The Spanish uh, is represented by the UCN. Um, Eastern uh, Italia is uh, represented by Ecologica in Puglia, and the Western uh, Mediterranean Italian Sea is represented by the Fondazione IMC in um, Sardinia. And we have uh, uh, the Hellenic Center for Marine Research that. Uh, Mm, is uh, located in Western uh, Mediterranean Sea. So our uh, project uh, uh, collect uh, a lot of uh, data from uh, uh, other projects and uh, we put uh, some, all this data in the, 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 the third work package, the work package 3 that is, uh, we, we, is uh, the studying work package and it's aimed to providing to the decision maker with the information and tools to make uh, Posidonia Beach Dune System Management uh, sustainable and uh, is aimed to defining strategic line and to include criteria in the management of uh, coastal area. Of course, the data that uh, we are uh, we are uh, uh, using we are use, using for uh, developing this project uh, um, derived from uh, uh, 
a lot uh, of information that we can find in um, in uh, in um, the in the literature in the other uh, in the other uh, reports uh, and uh, so on so uh, all uh, the partner is uh, in the work package studying is uh, to um, uh, to provide uh, some uh, specific uh, uh, goals so uh, then we 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 try to assess the qualitative uh, assessment of uh, management of Posidonia banquet and beach and dunes uh, we try to put all this kind of information in a GIST database in order to uh, in uh, in order to emphasize some uh, conflict. We try to uh, give uh, a, a socio-economic evaluation in the management of uh, Banquet of Posidonia Oceanica practice. Uh, we review the existing guidelines of the Medi uh, present in the Mediterranean countries for the sustainable beach and um, beach management and uh, seagrass management and uh, the relationship between all these kind of stuff and the uh, marine protected area or uh, other protected area in order to try to define a strategy and action for a Mediterranean region so all this data come from uh, all the data that we are analyzing come from several projects uh, we, we are, uh, we, we are uh, now um, uh, doing uh, a review of published data and reports so in, uh, you here can see the, the relationship between the Posidonia in, in synthesis in summary the relationship between the Posidonia Oceanica meadows and the beaches uh, in terms of uh, exchange of uh, material in particular of uh, leaf litter so uh, in the upper side of the, the slide you can see a typical uh, behavior of uh, low energy beaches in uh, uh, lower side of the slide you can see a typical behavior of uh, 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 w um, high energy beaches so the exchange of uh, litter uh, of uh, um, Posidonia Oceanica litter uh, um, follow different way in these two kind of beaches of course we try to summarize all this information in a um, GIS in a uh, system informative systems here you can see the example an example from uh, Sardinia Island in order to put in evidence to highlight the management practice so they remove the amounts of uh, banquet for uh, uh, from the local authorities and the state of beaches so uh, the state in sense of uh, um, re um, erosion or uh, stable beaches but also considering the morphology of beaches so pocket beaches uh, linear beaches or uh, uh, semi embayed beaches and in the right side you can see the frequency of removal of this uh, kind of material from uh, from beaches the the last part of uh, our project is very important because we try to uh, know how the banquet is uh, perceived by the um, tourist uh, the, the beach users but uh, we try to uh, know how the, the banquet is managed now along the Mediterranean region and how the stakeholder wish uh, to be managed the banquet. So uh, this is very important because we, 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 with the realization of this questionnaire we can uh, uh, know if the banquet are really uh, uh, really uh, intended as uh, waste or uh, they are uh, intended as uh, resources so if the people if the managers and the um, beach user are able to know that uh, the banquet can be a um, resource uh, because they provide ecosystem services to the to the to the coast to the ecosystem um, to the coastal ecosystem so now we are collecting this data on the on the all the country of uh, of the of the Postbimed project, and um, we we expected uh, a, a results from uh, from this kind of questionnaire in order to uh, give uh, our messages in the in the best practice, and uh, in order to put these messages that uh, banquet should mean not managed as a waste as a result of uh, our uh, our project so thank you very much uh, and uh, thank you for inviting me to this interesting uh, webinar
Thank you so much, Simone. Uh, and this is a really impressive uh, type of, um, of work, especially, I mean, uh, how, how hard it is to, um, to, um, yeah, to make people a bit more aware of, of this importance. Um, in my mind, there's a question about what about these areas where the banquets are, are already established, but there is the issue of the real marine litter um, coming on board. So how to differentiate in that in these cases where you have the banquets that you want to conserve, but then you have accumulation of the real I mean, plastic uh, and other sources of, uh, of litter that, uh, that maybe just come together and make it a little bit more difficult. I don't know if this is anything you have thought about uh, in your project. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We consider that that in the in the in the questionnaire for manager we we put this kind of question. If they separate, if they uh, sort the banquet, so the organic uh, banquet from the the leaf, the, the 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 plastic and the other kind of litter, in order to follow to different way on the m management. So. We are waiting these kind of answers from manager. Well, yes. So yeah, thank you. I would be really personally very interested to know what the answers would be. So thank you for for all the presenters. Um, I think we we have uh, now quite some some time to um, to go through some some questions uh, that we have prepared. So I think I think you all see in the screen. A um, few questions that we have prepared. Uh, I would like to ask the presenters uh, one by one to um, to, uh, to let us know um, your answers. And uh, for all the participants, uh, you have the possibility of writing your answers down or clicking in the in the poll, the three poll uh, sectors. Your uh, the, the answer that you think more relevant. We look uh, really forward for having all your inputs that we will use um, in the preparation of our upcoming activities and the short report that we will, um, um, I mean, the main conclusions that we will take out of, uh, of this session. Uh, so uh, please, for all the participants, I really invite you to please contribute to this. Uh, and for the uh, presenters, maybe I would um, I would uh, take it one by one in the, in the order of the presentations, mainly by asking you uh, two questions. So, so far you have had the chance to, uh, to hear uh, what the other projects um, are focusing on. So from our side, the, the question is um, if you could suggest collaborative activities uh, already after hearing each other's uh, to make this community uh, building activity that we are trying to support more effective. Um, that's the first question from my side. And the second one, if there are any aspects of relevance to marine litter uh, within all these presentations that were so far not addressed and that you would like to mention so we could take this uh, on board. The third question, I will, I mean, in case you have uh, uh, help us with anything that you feel missing in this webinar and you would let, like to uh, let us know, we will be happy to hear that. Um, so the, the, you have the questions uh, here, but I think that we have uh, Francesco who raised a question. I need to check how to... Uh, Hello to everybody. I'm Francesco De Franco from the MPA of Torre Guaceto, is uh, one of the partner of uh, Mare Project. And uh, just uh, um, a, 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 um, a question about the guidelines that the different projects uh, are uh, working on uh, marine litter, because uh, as MPA we are involved in a um, pilot action uh, in the Marine Strategy Directive for for the Italian Ministry, and uh, with the um, with the Ministry, we agreed about a protocol to monitoring uh, uh, to monitor the, uh, marine litter, the beached marine litter. 
So um, we, we are now discussing about this type of protocols. It could be very uh, helpful if uh, uh, we can add to the discuss with the Italian ministry an European scenario about this, uh, this topic in order to have uh, an effective monitoring of this important issue for the marine protected areas because we are, uh, yeah, we are an, Ad an Adriatic uh, marine protected areas and uh, the level of the marine litter in the Adriatic Sea is very, is very high, it's very relevant, so uh, we need to improve this type of discussion in order to bring this discussion with the Italian Ministry for this topic. Okay. Uh, maybe, uh, yes, I mean, it, it would be better than me answering. I think we can give um, now the, um, the uh, space to, um, to Francois and all the projects yeah. in case you could answer from your side uh, this question. I think um, I could translate it in a way to say how long is your, uh, the duration of your projects. And maybe I would add from my side that a bit also the the role of uh, Panacea, the, the project uh, project we are now uh, I mean um, uh, discussing, is a bit also to um, to put these activities together. So independently of the uh, of the timeline of the project, still the results could be capitalized on for a longer term. Uh, that's for now my a bit uh, answer as also the role of panacea in in this but then I'll keep it to each uh, individual project please when you when you answer these questions to also add the, the question that was raised on the duration of your project okay so I mean uh, uh, I mean the MPR uh, Francesco is part of AMAR project and what is happening is that all member states are in a way obliged and constrained to start on monitoring and to include different parameters, and I, I detail all of them and so on. So normally, formally, they will have to do that. And the point is that MPAs are, I mean, specific, specifically located with specific interest and with specific constraints. And so the idea is to have specific type of monitoring for MPA, something like refining, uh, refining the monitoring on the basis of what we have, guidelines, guidance, and so that have been already published. So we can provide any guidance, but also at the end of the project, what I think is important, in, not only for uh, the MPA where Francesco is working, but in all other AMA MPAs, but all non-AMA MPAs, all Mediterranean, there will be a way to refine the way to monitor both stranding, seafloor, and floating litter, and that, that, that would be the output of AMA. So I think it's quite important just to remind that uh, uh, our project is to refine the existing guidelines to adapt to fit better with the MPAs. Yes, thank you so much. Um, maybe I I, uh, I take the chance that you are uh, you are already you have answered the first questions to also ask you the, the uh, to answer the, the two other questions that uh, that we raise here. So if you could su suggest any collaborative activities that you have identified after hearing the other projects. That would be one. And uh, if you think there is any gap in what has been discussed so far that could be included also uh, in future discussions. No, I think I think we we do have a lot already. It's just a question of refining. And so the uh, what could be retained as the main point and the gap is just to uh, look for a specific strategy adapted for MPA. So we have the framework, we have the support scientific background, well, I mean, what to do and so on, but it's just a question of optimizing and uh, trying to get, I mean, at, at lower cost and more efficient and on specific indicators that will be, uh, that are really relevant more than, I mean, just monitoring something that, you know, without any view and uh, without any uh, interest. And that's, that's, that is the main point from uh, AMAR, you know? Yes. Thank you for that. That's, uh, that's a very important point, and um, actually, it should be part of um, what we would be aiming to put together. So I'm, I'm saying so because exactly. uh, part of this activity, I mean, uh, the preparation of this webinar, as that we called a working webinar, is mainly 
to be followed up by the upcoming um, event that um, yeah. that we will have in Barcelona, uh, where we think that uh, marine litter has been identified as a main thematic uh, area that is of interest and where many uh, projects are working on. And we think that there is a momentum to really put, as you just said, like specific strategies to be uh, to be somehow um, tested. And uh, we know already that they are adapted for uh, marine protected areas uh, to push them into more the management applicability, so the practice and also the, the policy. So that this is all taken, uh, and it will be included in um, in the upcoming, I mean, uh, short summary that we have, but also in the preparation for this activity where you and the other projects will be involved. And uh, I, mean, I will uh, later on uh, put the save the date for others that are hearing us or that would like to join. So thank you, Francois. Maybe we can uh, we can hear the Metsi Litter uh, reaction on these questions. Um, sorry, because I, I can hear you very, very <laughs> slow, but regarding collaboration, I think is the question. Is it right? Sorry, every, sorry, time, yeah. every time I, I need some time to unmute myself. Um, exactly, so exactly. part of the yeah. I think uh, the question, uh, we got uh, additional so work additional. To, uh, to let us know a bit about uh, the timeline, so when uh, is your project ending? And uh, from our side, what you see um, on the screen are any suggestions of collaborative activities that you have identified uh, from what you have heard from other projects uh, that could help us uh, also um, address them in the upcoming Okay, so regarding the ending of the project, uh, it, so we have the, we will finish the studying work package now in September, then we will start one year of testing of the initial protocol, the draft of the protocols, and uh, we will end uh, with the final protocols by the end of uh, July 2019. And uh, regarding collaboration, definitely I see a lot of uh, uh, thematic, because we are definitely working on the more, more problematic um, uh, thematic that we have, so we have to uh, Firstly, have more data on uh, on litter distribution and the impact, and uh, we need uh, to have comparable data in uh, in space and time, and uh, this is for sure something that uh, is uh, um, is studied uh, among different uh, projects. So all of us is working in collaboration with the guidelines already enacted in Europe, so the one from the JRC and the OSPAR and the UNEP map. And so, um, for example, for the, the floating, we are trying to, to set up some experiment that we know that are needed for a, setting the protocol for floating microliter and uh, we are not working on a liter on the beach but definitely we can uh, we can have a lot of exchange and uh, collaboration on the ingestion methodologies and on the floating methods yes thank you yes. so much um, we still have five minutes uh, close so maybe I would uh, I would ask also act for litter to to react uh, quickly on uh, on what uh, on what you think could be also to add to, to the discussion please maybe just one minute if possible, if possible. Uh, <clears throat> uh, in fact actually uh, it would be useful if all the projects presented could share a timeline of action because for sure it's, it's obvious that there is a lot of potential for collaborative action. However, from what I could uh, hear, uh, the timing is um, a bit uh, strict. 
And um, in fact, for example, in building upon the point made by Francois, um, the Act for Little plans to develop one of the major activities is to have uh, a governance, um, a joint governance scheme for marine litter management in, uh, protected, in marine protected areas, which means that, of course, these governance schemes will, as I said, will kind of list uh, considerations and actions, priority actions common to all Mediterranean MPAs. And uh, in this respect, it, it could take into account all the results produced by the different projects. However, the Act for Leader project will end um, by Ju July 2017, which means that most of these projects will not have delivered their end results. And I don't know what we can do in order to maximize the integration of what they have, at least at that point in time, in this uh, so-called uh, joint uh, governance scheme of marine litter. So this would be one point to raise. And uh, I think that it was also obvious that a lot of uh, all the projects, more or less, are carrying out um, surveys in different compartments. And with the exception of some compartments that have not been, uh, the methodologies are not so mature, but for example, for the beach litter part, they're very, very mature. I think that there is a necessity to harmonize the methodologies being deployed by the different partners because at the end of the day results will not be able to be comparable. And as Francois stressed, uh, first of all, there are, at least for the beach compartment, there are guidelines uh, at pan-European level that have been endorsed also by the Barcelona Convention with very uh, small tweaks. Uh, so my suggestion, recommendation for the projects to perform monitoring would be to, to apply these approaches. And um, what perhaps would, uh, would have to be some way integrated or incorporated uh, in these projects or future projects to address is fine-tuning the allocation uh, or the attribution of sources when it comes to uh, the different uh, marine litter surveys, because we are all of us used to hearing, seeing these lists with the different items found. Uh, but then it's a tremendous task to try to link the different items found with the sources from the marine litter sources from which they originated. So I'm not really sure if any of the projects uh, presented is going to work on this. There has been some work, but still fine tunings are needed for the Mediterranean region because it has specificities. So maybe this would be something additionally to be addressed. Yes, thank you so much, Tomas. I think it's a very uh, important point. I, I hope you hear me. Yeah? Uh, yeah, I think it's a very important point uh, to see how, how um, the fine tuning would happen. So, um, so yeah, th this this common work could uh, could have a I mean harmonized uh, somehow uh, results. Uh, I would then uh, please ask uh, Blue Island to react. Also, one minute if possible. We're really going uh, to the end. Yes. <clears throat> well, uh, very briefly, I say Tommy just earlier. I think that. Uh, for the, the sources, it's very important to, to work on the sources because we, we are talking about uh, waste generated by tourism in the Blue Island project. But uh, this is all what we find on the beach and we are not sure that it's really get there because of tourism. Uh, so the source and another interesting point that could be eventually addressed will be the resident time of the marine litter in the different uh, reservoirs, such as the beach, the surface water, and so on, because uh, we don't have a clue either of the the time these uh, items will uh, will stay on the on this uh, different uh, reservoir. And uh, one last point, I think I, I don't know if it was mentioned because uh, I can't hear very well what has been said. But uh, I would say that to create some kind of a Mediterranean uh, database of the, the marine litter with the, all the different spot sites that were uh, analyzed or monitored 
and uh, with the type of marine litter that was found and uh, I would say available for all uh, the partners for the from the different projects and uh, well yeah that's it that will be the, the few points that I would like to raise on my side Yes, thank you so much, uh, Michael. I think it's uh, it's also a very important point, and um, I also, I mean, uh, say it again that within Panacea we are working on um, harmonizing data, and we are working on providing a platform for the projects that are developing their data to add it, so we could um, we could um, capitalize on these different activities, and this could be if it's of interest to, to several projects, it could be something that we can support in, in providing. If locating the, the sources of marine litter is something that, uh, as a database, it's of relevance and importance, this could be something that could be prioritized as uh, some additional work taken on, on, on our side and supporting um, all of these projects. So this is a very relevant point that I take note of. Uh, I will just give also very brief time for Simone to have a reaction. Uh, also from um, post BMET side, please, just one minute. Thank you. No, no, I am uh, really interested to this uh, kind of stuff. So I think that the, the residence time of uh, litter that on the beach is, uh, is uh, is a, a, a good things to do for for my opinion for uh, the Posidonia Oceanica too is uh, one of the the main information that uh, is not uh, is not known because the removal operation and the, um, is uh, is related to this this kind of time so so it could be interesting to develop this kind of stuff so that's okay this. so I take note as also as a region-wide database, it would be something of interest, if I understand you correctly. Yeah. Okay. Very well, yes. So, thank you for uh, your time. We wanted to show you a bit uh, the statistics that were taken out of, uh, of um, the different uh, inputs we got from all participants, but due to time lag, I think we will add it to the, um, the conclusions that we will uh, prepare and share with you um, if, if you have the interest in that. Uh, and finally, you will see on the screen a bit some uh, bullet points that we have identified of importance, including I mean, what we just mentioned, the sharing data, the harmonizing of a region-wide database, the transferring of these best practices and their dissemination, uh, raising awareness, I think it's something that has been mentioned by uh, several projects. Uh, spreading the best practices, providing targeted support to practitioners uh, within, I mean, in uh, their management plans, uh, and then uh, the, on the policy side, focusing on uh, targeted uh, instruments within policies. But I think it has been also mentioned by several of you. Uh, if you had any, if you have any additional points that you think are important, we are more than happy to uh, to have you reflecting on that and sending it uh, to us. You have our contact email uh, that you can see, uh, so we can include them uh, also in uh, the summary that we will be providing. And finally, uh, you have the save the date, so we will have. Uh, two events in Barcelona happening. One is an open event on the 23rd and the 24th of October. Um, the, uh, the idea is to bridge science, practice, and uh, policy. So we will have a uh, type of panels, including um, your projects, other projects, in case uh, there are projects that show interest, uh, practitioners and um, policy makers to discuss uh, among others, the marine litter. Uh, the open event is on the 23rd and the 24th, and on the 25th we will have a community building event for the community of Panacea. So, in case you are interested, please save the date and show your interest, and we will be sending you more information on that. Uh, that's it from my side. Sorry for the six-minute uh, 
uh, that we took more from your time and we really enjoyed uh, hearing from you and getting to know more on your project. Hope to see you soon in Barcelona. Have a nice afternoon.